Hi, this is Ryan from Uncanny Owl. Over the next hour, we're going to take a bare, completely new WordPress site, add LearnDash to it, add a course to it, and take a theme and customize it to fit in a LearnDash context. And at the end of the hour, we'll end up with a site that looks like this. Now, it's not a perfect site, it's not a great example, but in an hour, we'll have e-commerce, a course that's fully published, and everything ready to go. So we hope you find it helpful. There are a lot of steps involved, but we've tried to make them as simple as possible over the course of the next hour. Before we could start building our new WordPress site, we need to set it up on hosting somewhere. Now for low traffic sites and sites that are just getting started, we generally use WP Engine. And there are a lot of reasons for that, and I'll cover some of them as we go through setting up the, the WordPress site. But the main ones are really that we have less to worry about when we're on WP Engine. If we have an issue, support is quite responsive. There is a chat that we can use. It, they take care of issues really quickly. They have a lot of monitoring in place. There's just less for us to worry about. We don't have to worry about backups or security or, um, or caching or anything like that. Um, everything is just kind of taken care of once the plan is set up. So in terms of setting up a plan, I'm not going to work th walk through the entire process, but um, for a new LearnDash site, any of these plans would be suitable. Um, and I'm going to be demoing the creation of the site on a professional plan, but uh, certainly the personal plan is sufficient for uh, sites just getting started. So let's assume I've gone through the process of, of registering for the WP Engine account. And at this point, I go to my account page. So I'm now signed into WP Engine and I can see my list of installs and basic information about my account. So what I want to do is create a new site. And I'm going to click Add Install to do that. And it's going to prompt me for the install name. So this has to be unique on WP Engine. So I am going to call it UO Screencast. And make sure that's available. And we're all set with that. So the rest I don't need. It's going to be a new install. It, it's not transferable. That means I'm not transferring it to somebody else. I don't need password protection on it immediately. And it's not going to be multi-site. So let's go ahead and create that install. And that can take a few minutes. So while it's doing that, what I can do then is I can set up the DNS mapping. So what we need to do is make sure that the domain we want to use for the site is correctly mapped to the host. So there are a few ways to do that, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the C name. You could also use an A record. Um, this does vary depending on the host, and I won't get into specifics about you know what DNS is, or what an A record is, or when to use CNAME or anything like that. WP Engine certainly has some guidance, and I just need to make sure that it's working. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a subdomain off of uh, one of our domains. So I think what I'll do is I will call it, uh, I'm going to call it, uh, let's just call it uh, screencast.uncannycloud dot com and we're not doing any other redirects so that's what I'm going to use and just to make sure I'm going to copy that out for when I set up the uh, subdomain in our DNS records so that is also going to be the primary domain I'm just gonna wait for a few minutes um, until the site has been created fully um, to change the primary address so the what users would use when they want to go to this site so our dns is mostly managed over on amazon so i'm going to click to that now and you'll remember that i used screencast as the subdomain and what i'm going to do is change it to a cname record and then what i will do is go back to this and i need to copy the cname over so what is it mapped to so I'm going to use that, and then if WP Engine does happen to change the IP address or something like that, it's very rare, but we have seen a few instances where if servers do need to be moved, it's a very transparent process, but at the same time, locking yourself to an IP address um, can potentially add a bit more risk than using the CNAME record. Anyway, so let's go ahead and create that, and uh, it will take a few minutes for that to get propagated anyway. And we can go back here. And if I refresh this page now, we should see that the site has been created. 
Okay, so while the site is being created, you can see that there's this propagating message here. So it's not quite finished being built. It might be better to take a break for a few minutes before you get deeper into things. Um, while that was going on, though, I did receive an email from WP Engine to set a new password. So I'm going to go ahead and open that email and reset the password. Okay, so here is the email. And I will just click on this link and reset the password. And let's so to get a password, I do need to enter the username that was sent in the email. So in this case, it is uoscreencast. And then I will click on Get Password. And then it's going to confirm that it's going to send me a confirmation link, which I will look for in my email. So I can see that that's come in in the background now. Now, if you remember, the username here is uoscreencast. So I will go ahead and put that in and then put in the password again and I'm going to make sure that it remembers me. So that means that it's saved for two weeks then, and I don't have to sign in again for two weeks on this site. Normally, WordPress keeps you signed in for two days. So now I have the site, and it's set up. So let me go back to WP Engine now. We can uh, make sure that uh, the IP address is, oh, it's still propagating. So we'll wait for that. I'll just talk about a few other benefits to WP Engine while I'm here that we do make use of. So first, um, backups are automatic and daily, and there's nothing we need to worry about to force them. And it does backups for both production and staging. And staging sites are extremely helpful for when you're updating plugins and themes and WordPress itself if it's a big major update. So what we would do then is we would clone to staging from inside the site. You'll see a, a WP Engine menu entry in WordPress. If I switch back, you'll see it's right at the top here. So there's staging options there. So that's what we would do. We would clone to staging um, and then run any updates there, make sure that everything works before we update them on the live site. And again, you can you know back up anytime you want. So maybe if you do before updates or something like that, it will send notification to the owner as well as anyone else you want it to. So it's going to back things up. That usually takes, especially for a new site, that should only be about 10 seconds. So if I refresh the page, we should see it. And then for any of the backups, you can certainly download them, restore them. It's very easy to do. You can add an SSL certificate from here. Um, other useful things, you could add password protection on here if you wanted to. If FTP permissions ever get broken, so you have trouble uploading something or they're not working as expected. There's a reset tool here that makes things really easy. And then there are controls for caching here, which is very helpful. And then I'm not going to turn it on yet, but there is a CDN built in. So if you want to use a, a delivery network for a faster performance for loading um, the static files on the site, definitely enable that. Um, it's just, it kind of gets in the way during development if we're pushing a lot of updates to those static files. So instead of having to flush them, I'm just going to leave that disabled until we're further along with the setup. So let's go back here to, uh, I just want to make sure, okay, it's still propagating. But what I will do at this point is I will switch the primary domain so that now it will be screencast.uncannycloud.com. So I'm going to set that as the primary. Let's go ahead and try the new domain out by clicking on the link here. So I'm going to open that in a new tab. <clears throat> okay, so we have a new site now. It is set up, but it is very bare and using a default theme that we don't want to use. So we're going to switch that all out and start. Let's sign into the site. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is choose a new theme, just so we can get an idea of where we are now and uh, what needs to be done to make the site a little more intuitive and learner friendly. So let's go ahead and upload the university plugin. So now I'm going to go ahead and upload the university theme. So I'm going to just go in here and find the installation file for it. There is the theme itself. So you can see there is a child theme folder. And if you are doing any kind of customizations to the site, so this would be things like um, modifying the look and feel in a way that can't be done with a WordPress customizer, 
um, so changes necessitate CSS use, or you're changing functionality with snippets of code, those would go in the functions.php file, or you're doing template overrides in the child theme. Those are all reasons that you would want a child theme, and generally speaking, you should be using a child theme. But just because I'm going through this very quickly, and our goal is just to create something that looks nice with largely out-of-the-box styles and capabilities, then uh, I'm not going to go ahead and set up a child theme because we can do what we want without any modifications to the theme. So I'm going to go ahead and install some of the recommended plugins as well, um, just to make things a little faster. So let's go ahead and use contact form seven. So that is installed. And then let's go ahead and install the next one for navigation as well. And then finally we'll install WooCommerce. So those have all been installed now, but not activated. So let's go ahead and activate them all. So I'll do a bulk action for that one. And now they are all activated. So let's see what things look like now. Let's go back to our site and see what it looks like out of the box. So right now, this is the home page. It's still blog content. It's a little basic, maybe not what we want to use necessarily. So there are a couple of changes that we want to make here. Okay, so it's prompting me just because I've installed WooCommerce to go through the uh, quick setup. So I will go ahead, it's gonna create some uh, default pages there. In this case, I'm gonna say that the store is in the United States in California, and that is all correct. So we'll do that, uh, no tax, and we won't be shipping any products. And for payments, we will be using, let's just use Stripe for now because that makes things a lot easier. Of course, if you're using Stripe on your site, you would need to set up an SSL certificate, which is an extra step that you can do through WP Engine. So I'm just gonna say no to that. All right, and let's get back to the WordPress dashboard for now. All right, so I do see that there is an issue with Stripe. Let's quickly take care of that. And we'll go ahead and activate that. All right, now that WooCommerce has been set up, the next thing we wanna do, there are some additional plugins that come with University that we do want to use, but they're not installed out of the box. So there are a couple that, um, that do have dependencies and that are expected for University that will make things easier, but uh, they're not part of that auto install process. So now that we're back in here, let's go ahead and install those. And in this case, we're going to upload them. So there are a couple we're going to be using, and this part is going to take just a minute. So if I go back in here, so instead of that, I'm gonna go into plugins. So these are all the extra plugins. What I'm going to do is I'm going to install the extra plugins and just some of them. The one that I just did is uh, a slider plugin. So if you wanted to use a slider, then that is available. So we'll go to that one and uh, activate that now that it's been uploaded. All right, let's go ahead and install the next one. And that is UCourse. We don't, I'm not gonna use the first one. Um, the first one does help for updates for the university uh, theme, but because this is a, a one-time site, I'm not going to go ahead with that. You can see that this is prompting me to uh, license um, Slider Revolution, but it's included in the theme, so I'll just ignore that prompt. And let's go to the next one now. So we'll go ahead to that. We didn't do the event one yet. yet. I am just going to install all of them and then import the demo content. So again, you can see what's available out of the box and then we can figure out what to remove. Again, starting off from the demo content is going to make things a bit faster. Um, it does mean that we're not quite as in control and don't have as much awareness of what's been installed, but um, for getting a site up quickly, it is certainly the fastest way to go. So I think if I done member, let's do it again just in case. That one already exists. So after member, we have projects, which we're not going to use anyway, but again, let's do everything that the demo content is expecting. Oh, 
we'll install the short codes and then uh, the last one is Visual Composer which is a page builder which makes it a little easier to control page layouts so let's install that as well and those are now all the plugins that University has dependencies on so what we can do at this point once that's activated you can see that it did add some new elements to the sidebar over there all right so from this welcome screen let's go over to um, appearance and theme options and then I'm going to tell it to import sample data so if I go down to the bottom here there is a button for importing sample data which will of course take a few minutes and uh, it's going to change some of the default options so we'll wait for that to complete which can take a few moments now the one consideration when we are importing a lot of data is that uh, there might then be a lot that needs to be deleted and if you don't delete it even if it's hidden it might still be indexed by a search engine so it is a good idea to be careful and if you are starting from sample data just take a look through the pages and posts and make sure there's not anything you don't want there so most of it's been set up now and we can take a look at the front end again so let's see what that's now done you can see right now that it hasn't found the slider that it's looking for but it does have some basic elements and it at least gives us something to start with which is good there's not a lot here that I'm expecting to reuse so let's uh, let's get started then let's uh, let's edit this and add some of the other uh, plugins that we need for this to work so I'm gonna go back into admin and what I want to do now is install some of the other plugins that are a requirement for this project so again we're going back to um, plugins and add new all right let's try installing the learn dash plugin itself first so I'm gonna to have to go up here and go back to this folder I will install that plugin and turn that on so it's installing it now and then once that's done I will activate it and while I'm here I'm just going to install two more plugins so the first one I'm going to install is the uncanny learn dash toolkit that we created so it is right here so now that that's installed we'll go ahead and activate that all right and uh, the next thing I'm going to install is the pro set of modules for it just to make things a little bit easier so let's go back to uh, adding a new plugin and I will go ahead and install the pro modules so let's go ahead and upload that and activate it all right in this case I'm not going to bother putting a license key in; it's going to work without it and again this is just for one-time use so what I do want to do though now that I've got the rest of the plugins installed um, a lot of these things aren't relevant so the first thing I'm going to do is modify the home page a bit because there's a lot that we just don't need all right let's start off with editing the page all right now the first problem on the home page was of course the slider was missing I went ahead and quickly imported the demo content for that so it's it's there and the slider setting is correct now um, so it's populated here but it doesn't look great right now and the reason it doesn't either actually I can I can go ahead and show you that the, the the big issue right now it's got the slider but it's got this list of uh, news items which we don't want so I'm going to very very quickly make some changes to that page and the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that post content because it was confusing and doesn't really serve a purpose there's also way more here than we actually need so if I do a side-by-side -side comparison let me open uh, open that up 
you can see there is a slider at the top, so a slider at the top, then there's a, a row here, and that correlates to exactly what you see here. So the slider at the top and then this row of content here. So there are these buttons here. I'm going to leave that, I think, but I'm going to get rid of everything else because we just don't need it, especially at this point. So I'm going to, to delete those things. I'm just going to click the trash. You can see it's another row here. Within that, there's columns. So I'm not going to cover really the details of how to use Visual Composer, but basically, you know, this icon is to move things around. This is to control the columns within, uh, within a row. Um, within that, you can see we have these different blocks. Uh, for each one of those, if you click over here, that's to drag it and move it around. This is to edit. This is to duplicate. This is to get rid of it. Um, and then you can add additional ones by clicking here, for example, and you can see what's available. And then you can see there are also controls at the column level and at the row level here. So there's a lot you can do with it, um, but it's, it's better to uh, read documentation or to actually try it. So I'm going to get rid of all these sections that I don't care about because I just want a simple, fast homepage that's going to showcase the course that I'm creating. So let's go ahead and update that. All right, this is starting to look a little cleaner now. So you can see it's got a slider. It does have colors up here. And then I've got a big blank space here that we don't necessarily want. And uh, then we've got the text that we want. And then this is uh, these are all footer elements. So let's go back. So from this page, I'm just going to modify the height, which is currently 800. I'm going to change this to 600 to make sure everything is flush. So we've already spent a fair bit of time on this page. Um, I am going to go into Slider Revolution, though, just to uh, change a couple of things really quickly so that they're more relevant. So I'm going to edit this slider that we have. So this is the uh, university slider that's included and the one that I imported. All right, so it's the it's the slides themselves that I want to modify. So I'm going to leave the image, of, but of course you could uh, swap out the images. But what I did want to do is just show you how to change uh, this information, for example. So right now these are buttons, but they don't show up as buttons. And uh, that's because the styles are applied later. This just shows plain text in this view. So what I can do, though, I can modify this text. So this is the text right now. I'm going to change it to um, economics training. And uh, I could add more content. Um, so I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm going to get rid of this entirely. Delete that layer. And I'm going to move these up. So I'm going to move that up. And I'm going to move that up. All right. So we could change the links here as well. So if I, uh, if I do edit these themes, then I can change the text. So here is the text. I clearly don't want that. So I'm going to change it to um, whatever course or whatever, um, whatever I use. In this case, for the purchase, I'm going to use some kind of add to cart link. But we'll get to that in a few minutes. First, we need an actual course. All right, I'm just going to save my changes so far uh, for this. So I'll click on the save slide link there and let's do a quick recap. Let's uh, let's go back and refresh this page and you can see that we have done some of that. We've got those working. It is now a cleaner home page. It can still be modified but uh, we've got the basics there. So the next thing I want to do is add a course. Of course that is uh, the reason we're here in the first place. So the first thing we need to do is create a course. And I'm going to add a new course. And I'm going to call this course Introduction to Microeconomics. And what I'm going to do for this course is I'm going to take content from an open courseware course. So this is MIT Open Courseware. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some of that content because it's already open source. So what I'm going to do here is uh, copy this overview and start with that. So I'm going to go back to LearnDash now, and I'm going to paste in that content. 
And if you're not too familiar with WordPress, generally um, you will be working in this uh, WordPress editor. So this is what's out of the box with WordPress. You have the editor there. It's easy to enter content and, and adjust it. So there are controls here that you can use. Um, once I publish this, it's going to add the URL here. And you can see that right now it's, uh, it's just adding the URL based on the title. And if it was regular posts, it would just be adding IDs. So this probably isn't what we want because it's not going to be easy for users to remember. So just now that we're starting to add some content, like a new post, we want to go into the permalinks settings. So let's go into permalinks and let's change this to post name instead. So we'll go ahead and save those. And I will go back over to the course that I just created, which will now show the permalink when I edit it. Okay, so now you can see it's using this course's slug. And then the introduction to microeconomics is what we're using as the permalink and the title here. So we've got some content, some basic text content, but obviously that's kind of boring at this point. There's, uh, there's really not much to it. So let's, uh, let's change that. Let's, uh, let's add some more to it. But uh, before we can do that, and I'm just going to clean things up a bit so that it's not confusing on this page because everything that's listed here we don't necessarily need. I'm not going to use categories. We're not going to use slider revolution on this page. Um, it's only a single author. I don't need to know that information. Um, I am going to leave these up. But one thing I am going to do to make things easier, I'm going to make the assumption that uh, this is a site that is not going to have a blog. So we're not going to use a blog, um, which means that I don't want comments enabled by default. So for this one, I can easily turn it off, but the easier thing to do is to go over to um, WordPress settings, go into discussion, and uh, turn this off so that automatically comments aren't added to all new posts. And that's going to save me some time as I add more learn dash content later. So let's just go back into the uh, edit course page. So we've got that. We still do have to uh, deselect it from that one just because we've already created it. So comments are no longer enabled for that one. This is still confusing with uh, the speakers. I need to get rid of speakers. Um, these are no longer relevant. So. Now we've done that and we have vastly uh, cleaned up our course edit page. So it's a lot cleaner now. All right, now course materials, we are going to leave this field blank. There are no materials. Um, and this would show up though on the courses page if we were using them. We are going to make this a paid course. So let's start off by making this closed. And just as a quick introduction to the course types, um, open means anyone can access it, so full access to anyone whether they're signed in or not. You don't need an account. Uh, this can be indexed by search engines. Um, so if you want everything to be completely open, that is what you would use. Closed means that someone has to be added to the course or um, there has to be something that adds them to it. So this would be things like WooCommerce in uh, the example on our site. Um, so if someone buys a course in WooCommerce, then we would uh, we'd be able to add them that way. But users can't register themselves. It's what's important with uh, closed courses. Free courses means that uh, anyone can self-enroll, but they need an account to do it. So they have to be signed in, and then they'll see a Take This Course button. If they click it, then they can self-enroll. Buy Now and Recurring are not options we use very often, um, just because they tend to not accommodate a lot of extra changes that we might need. So WooCommerce is really flexible. We can do things like subscriptions and taxes and, and all of those types of things. Uh, if you use Buy Now, it's native to LearnDash, so uh, we don't have those options. There's nothing for taxes. Uh, we can do a subscription with this, but uh, you have much more limited control than uh, you would have with WooCommerce. So we're going to make this one closed. And we will come back to this. This is the custom button URL which uh, we can, so what would happen is if somebody accesses the course page, they don't have access to it, they're not enrolled, there will be a take this course button. And what we can do is if someone clicks that, we can tell the system where to send them. So in this case, what we would do is we would add the course product to the cart and then direct them to checkout, which is uh, going to save them some steps and, and be a little more intuitive. 
So we'll come back to that because we don't have the URL right now. Um, but let's go ahead and add a price. So let's say that it is a $99 course. Course access list is uh, not a field that we should change. It's going to add IDs as pe people get added to the course. Um, so manual edits are risky there. We're going to sort things by menu order and ascending. So over here you can see there is an order field here. It will show up on lesson and topic pages as well. And uh, just to explain that a little bit more, the concept, LearnDash out of the box has uh, three levels in a hierarchy. So courses can have lessons, lessons can have topics. They basically break down the course materials into more manageable, um, more manageable sizes and pages. So anyway, we use sorting by menu order so that we can control that because out of the box, if we left it at default, things would be organized by creation date, which makes it very hard to move things around and get them in the correct order. So we'll leave it at that. As this is a course that's in development, we're going to disable lesson progression, which means that we can go anywhere we want in the course and it's not going to tell us that we have to complete earlier lessons first. Course prerequisites, there are none for this one. We're not going to expire access. We don't need to hide the lesson tables and there is no certificate at this point. We're going to be creating a very, very simple course. So we'll go ahead and update that. Um, while we're here though, what I do want to do is add a representative featured image. So for that, I'm going to go over to uh, deposit photos, which we use regularly for stock media. So I'm going to quickly grab things. So I'm just going to go over to, here we go, here's deposit photos. I've got a few options up on the screen now. I've already done a previous search. So in this one, I'm just going to use, this one is going to be sufficient, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. So let me just grab that. And uh, it's it's extremely large. So. What I would do normally is I would resize it and make it something suitable to WordPress um, so that we're not uploading a gigantic image, but uh, I'm going to skip some steps again and just go right to uploading it. Anyway, so let's go ahead and uh, uh, I'm going to drag a file over. So let me find that again. Here it is and here we've added it. So I am skipping some steps, you know, normally we'd like to have some nice alt text here, um, just appropriate descriptions. Um, some of it, the title and caption are added automatically, but there really should be alt text, but I'm going to skip that. So we have a course page now with some content. The next thing I want to do is add some lessons to that so we can see how lessons roll up to it. It's still hard to get a, an idea of how things are going to fit together because I'm just adding various bits and pieces here and there. And I know that's a bit confusing. It will get a bit more clear as we, we bring the pieces together uh, further along, but we need the basics there uh, just so that we can do that. Things get connected a little after we create the initial pieces. For this first lesson, I'm going to focus on supply and demand. So unit one is what I'm going to call it. Supply and demand. All right, so I'm going to start off with some content and I'm just going to paste it in again. So it's not really important what kind of content we have at this point. I just want to show how we would add it. So I've got some text here and I also want to add a YouTube video. So what I would do to add a YouTube video is I would just go to the YouTube page and then copy the URL that appears in the address bar of the browser. So I'm going to paste that in here and you can see that WordPress automatically takes care of embedding it properly. So now we've got a bit of content. We've got a lesson now that we can use. It hasn't been added yet. So what I'm going to do here, and let me clean up this page as well because it is it also has a lot of content that we're not going to be using. We're not going to be using those. Um, and that. All right, so that's a bit cleaner now. So you can see we've got this lesson section down here. And in here is where we define what course this lesson is part of. So we're going to make that association here. And the rest, 
we don't have to worry about at this point. However, over here on the right side, we're just going to control the order. And what I like to do is go up by increments of 10, just because it makes things easier to move around. If you went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you decided well, less than 5 should actually come first, then now you've got to reorder everything. But if, if I order it by 10s and leave big gaps in between them, it's very easy to put things uh, in different positions. All right. So we now have a video, which is excellent. So we've got a video that we can use and some text, and we got our first lesson. So you can see it shows up in here. So this is now part of this course. We've got this first lesson. Now let's add a second lesson. And just to make this very, very simple so we can move forward with other things, um, I'm just going to make this a quiz. So the people are going to go through, they're going to see that first lesson with some text and a video, they're going to watch it, and then they're going to go straight into a quiz. So I'm going to call this um, Supply and Demand Quiz. And on this page, this is um, what's going to happen is Learn Dash, when I add a quiz, it's going to add a table with the quiz. And it's going to be beneath any content I add in this area. So because it's going to be adding it there, what I want to do up top here in this section is introduce some context for the quiz. So I want to talk to the user or to the learner a bit about you know, what they're going to experience, um, how many questions are going to be in the quiz, what types of content areas it covers, what score they need to pass, uh, information like that, just so that they're better informed and are able to go into the quiz with, uh, with some, some comfort level. So I'm going to say um, this is the final uh, unit quiz. Um, and I'm going to say it will take approximately 10 minutes. And it has uh, 50 questions, let's say. All right, so we're setting some expectations there. They have some instructions. They know what's going to happen. So this lesson, we want to come after the first lesson. We're going to make this 20. And then over on this side, we have to do the course association again. And now we can publish that. And when we publish it, we will see this associated content section changed to reflect that it's now uh, in this course. And all it's missing at this point is um, the quiz. We have to associate the quiz with it. But before I do that, let's let's go back and, and take a look at what this actually looks like. So let's go here. We're at the quiz level. Okay, so this is now a course page. This is the course that we just created. So you can see it's got the featured image that I added. We'll also be using that potentially elsewhere in a course grid if we wanted to. Um, so the featured image is there and you can see that it does have the list of lessons and uh, there is some styling there. What doesn't make a lot of sense right now is the entire sidebar um, showing these posts that we don't want and a list of courses and events that don't exist. So we will want to change the sidebar. Um, so we have this here. Let me just go into the particular lessons that we added so that you can see how they're set up. So there is the text we added as well as the video. And then these are the Learn Dash elements. So in this case, um, I can click on this to identify this is complete. And I can go to the next lesson again because I didn't enforce uh, lesson progression. So you can see right now, this just has the text at the top, but it doesn't have our quiz yet. So this is probably confusing, and let's go and add the quiz then. So if I go back here, I'm going to go back to um, quizzes under Learn Dash. And what I want to do is create a new quiz. And we're going to keep things really simple again, so I'm not going to delve into all the different quiz options that are available. But I'm going to name this Supply and Demand. All right, now that that's been named, you can see there's this big section here. If you want to include text at the top of all the quiz questions, this is where you would put it. Normally, because we're associating quizzes directly with lessons or topics, which have instructions on those pages, we leave this blank. But if you're not doing that, or you're taking a different approach, you can certainly uh, populate this however you'd like to. So right now, this hasn't been associated with anything. You can see, again, this is far too much on the screen that is not relevant to us. So I'm going to get rid of 
all of those there. That's a little cleaner. Now we can scroll down. We see this quiz section. So first I could control how many attempts the user is allowed to do. Um, I am going to leave these at the defaults. The only thing I need to change then is the course for it and then the lesson. So this is the quiz lesson that we set up for it. And then down here, I'm just going to do a couple of really quick things. I'm going to display questions randomly and I want to turn, okay, that's on. And I just want auto start. All right, the rest I'm going to leave, but certainly in your installs, you could modify the settings and even set up templates. The reason I want auto start is because I'm associating it with uh, a lesson or topic. The user would click on the quiz link in the table and I don't want them to have to click another button. They're already having to click in the table to get started, so let's not make extra clicks. Now, after the quiz item has been set up, we're going to add questions, and I'm going to make this very, very simple. And to do that, I'm just going to make one question. So I'm going to quick click on Add Question there. There are really four fields that we need to populate on the question page. Um, I'm going to highlight just those. So the first one is the title. The next one is the question itself. After that, we've got the answer type and then the actual answers. So the correct answer or answers and the distractors. So what we generally do is put the question in the title field as well as in the question field. And that will help you identify it. If you go back to your list of questions, then you can see exactly which one it is. If you don't do that, then it's going to number the questions automatically. So it'll be very confusing if you're in there and trying to figure it out. So let's go ahead and paste a question in here. And now we're going to paste the question in here. And this is going to be a multiple choice question. Now I know multiple choice here is one of the options, but that means that there are one or more correct answers. So that means check boxes. If there is a single correct answer, then we want single choice. So this would be true, false, and what you would normally think of as uh, multiple choice. So single choice, meaning radio buttons, there's one correct answer. Now let's populate this. So I'm going to add some sample um, answers to this one. I'm going to type them out. So bear with me for a moment. And the next one is... And the final answer. There's a typo. All right, excellent. So I'm going to choose that as the correct answer and go ahead and save that. Now, if you wanted to, there are additional options. You could um, provide feedback with those, explain why something is right or wrong. You could add a hint if you wanted to. You could have different points for different questions, but let's keep this one simple. All right, so we have a question now. Let's go back to the actual course. So I'm just gonna cheat a little bit and go into the uh, course that we created. So I know the URL for that. So here is the course again, and let's go back into the quiz lesson, and you can see now that I've done the association and created a quiz, there is a quiz section here. You can see this is still too busy. We really have to clean that up. So here there is some styling that's unique to um, university that we don't have to worry about then. It makes it a bit cleaner. So anyway, I'll answer that question. I will put in the correct answer. Learn Dash is now going to score it and it's got some information about how I did there. At this point, there's no certificate. We could associate this quiz with a certificate, but uh, we're not going to do that just for this demo. Again, we're just keeping it as, as simple as possible. When I click, click here to continue, let me just make note of one thing for that. It takes me back up to the course level, and you can see it's now identified as complete. So this green check mark means completed. This one is not yet complete. So let's clean up the course a bit while I'm in here, and then we'll we'll look at e-commerce and, and some other elements in, in a few minutes. So let's look at um, this. We don't want the posts. These are all sidebar elements. So this is um, what we would set up in the widget. So if I go back over here, so I'm back into the admin interface, and I want to go to appearance and widgets. And after that, we'll take a quick look at uh, 
I think WooCommerce first so that we can update the menus. All right, so we don't want search. I'm going to delete that. I don't want latest posts. So we'll delete that and delete the course listing that it's got out of the box. We'll delete all of those things until it's empty. And now what I do want is a progress bar. I'm going to call it course progress. So I'll save that. The next thing I want is course navigation. So I'll put that right underneath it. All right. And while I'm doing this, while I'm setting up widgets, I'm going to turn on a couple of things that are going to make things easier by using the Uncanny Learn Dash Toolkit. So one of the things that it does is add um, the option for additional widgets. And I do want them since I'm working with widgets. So I'm going to just add a couple of things that would be particularly helpful on this site. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that. I'm going to hide this. So I'm going to update these first, and then I'm going to uh, set the settings. So first I want to control these. I'm not going to do anything with groups, so I'll skip that. I do want a resume button so that users can pick up where they left off. I do want login, logout links. I'm going to have a transcript page. Um, I do, I'm not going to worry about styling on this site. Um, I'm going to add a login, logout redirect, and... Is there anything else that I want here? I may use that, so I'll use that as well. Okay, so I'm going to save my changes, and then for the ones that I turned on, I'm just going to quickly set them up for any that I need. So hide in admin bar. Um, my users are going to be subscribers and customers. So for them, I don't want them seeing the admin bar. All right, front end login. We haven't set that up yet, but why don't I do this now? So right now there is there is actually a login page. So again, you can see that um, University added a lot of pages out of the box, and I will go in and edit those. So the dashboard I'm going to use, I don't need to set anything up for that. The resume button, I'm fine with the default here, which would be resume. I'll just put it in anyway so you can see how it's changed. That's saved. Um, transcript. I'm not going to worry about changing any of the colors yet or even branding things because, again, I want to keep things simple. What I do want to do here is I'm going to add a redirect to my courses. This is a page that I haven't created yet, and when people log out, I want them going to the home page. That's what I'm saying there, and uh, that's it. I will save my changes again. And now if I go back to Appearance Widgets, then I am able to add our list of certificates. Um, yeah, it just it makes it easier to retrieve the PDF files for the certificates. So I will leave that there. I'm just going to make that an initial cap. The rest is fine. So now if I go back to where I was on the course page, then when I refresh, it's going to make a lot more sense to have applicable items in the sidebar. So within this course, you can see I've completed one of the two lessons, so that's why it's 50%. You can see this one has been completed. If there were topics nested beneath this, then they would show here. And if I had any certificates, they would show here. And you can see this now is a much cleaner course page. All right, we could also remove all of these, and normally we would, but this is a CSS change. So that I'm going to leave out for now, um, but you could certainly hide those elements. All right, now um, you can see this, the menus are not relevant. In fact, they're kind of a mess for what we want to do. So I'm going to clean them up now, um, but I do need a few other pages. So I'm just going to set up the shell of the pages that I'm going to need to do that. So let's go ahead and create a new page. So one of the pages, um, if you'll remember, was um, my courses. And I'm using that for login, logout, redirects. All right, I'm going to paste it in the text view so that it captures all of the, uh, the code that I want. So I'm going to talk through exactly what I pasted um, so that it's clear. So first, we've got a short code to only show this to people that aren't signed in. 
So in this case, if they're not signed in, they would see this uh, welcome and a reminder or a prompt to either register or uh, sign in. In this case, though, I don't want to give people the ability to um, create a free account. All accounts should be created by WooCommerce. So um, I'm just directing them to a login page. Um, if they are signed in, so you can see this short code ends here, and this logged in one starts here, then I'm going to greet them with a personal greeting. Let's make this even bigger. And uh, there's some information there about what they can do, and uh, it's a bit of a greeting there. All right, so you can see that is only shown for um, users that are signed in. And then we do need to close that. So to close it, I'm just going to add a tag here. So to close it, I'm just going to add a tag here. So this would be uo underscore show. And then right now what I do have is um, a button. So I pasted that in. This is going to be the button for the, uh, the resume course. So I'm going to include that, um, make that really clear so that people can uh, resume where they left off. And so that is the page. It's got the right URL that I used elsewhere. And there's nothing else that we need to set here. So I will go ahead and publish that page. What it's not showing right now, though, that uh, I should add, and I just pa pasted some content in, I wanted to also demonstrate that when you're adding anything from the Uncanny Learn Dash Toolkit, it's very, very helpful to use uh, the knowledge base. So I'm going to go to that now. And once that's loaded, what I do want to do is include, so I'll go into the knowledge base articles for the pro modules. I want the, I'm going to use a transcript elsewhere, so I need a transcript page. I'll get to that in a second. First, I need a course dashboard. So for that one, I'm just going to copy the short code. So the short code is here and it's going to populate a table with a list of the users enrolled courses. So I'll have that there, and then beneath that I will have the dashboard. So let's go ahead and take a look at this page that has uh, just been created. So again, I will open that in a new tab. And there, it's very simple, but uh, that's what we have. So in this case, you can see that uh, this and this is confusing because when WP Engine creates the, um, the admin account, it doesn't add a first name and last name. So I'm going to add them instead and update my profile. So it's just confusing there because we had this greeting with an empty name value. All right, so there, that is what I put as my first name. Now it's showing it correctly. Now we have a nice page to get users into their courses. So we have that nice list. It's going to populate dynamically as more courses are added and as people are enrolled in those courses. So we've got all of that information set up properly. So right now if I go to, um, I'm going to go to my list of pages because there are actually a couple that I need to update. So if I skip ahead, I know one that we need to change is login, which is what I'd used for the, um, the front end login. And then I did see that we do have two of these. I want to make sure this one is set up properly with uh, WooCommerce. And as long as it is, that looks good. Then I need to get rid of the one that WP Engine set up. So let's go ahead and uh, we will trash that. All right, just to avoid confusion later. And then I had opened up this login page. Um, so we are not using theme my login. We are going to go back to the knowledge base here. And what we want to do is go into the regular toolkit and take a look at front end login, just so that you're familiar with where to find these short codes when you need them. So you can see here is a, um, that can be added to any page. And what we need is this short code. So let's go back over, replace theme my login with that, and we'll be all set. 
So we've got our account page, we've got the login page. One thing we are still missing is the transcript page because I want to get these all in the menu so that it's not confusing. So I'm going to go my transcript is what I'll call it. And then again, we're dropping another shortcode in. So if I go back a little bit, so back to here, so we're that we're in pro and I want the, where is the learner transcript? So within here, I'm just scrolling down until I find the short code, and that's it. So uo underscore transcript, and that's all I need. So now that I've added these four pages, I'm going to go ahead and change the menus, just so everything will start to make a bit more sense when you see the site. So let's go ahead and Right now you can see there's way too much going on. So there are a lot of menus that we are not using. So in this case, I don't need that. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Um, rather than going through that with uh, everything though, let's, let's just get rid of um, the things we don't need for the menus that are visible. So uh, this is the top navigation. So let me just go out to the site again. So let me go out here. You can see under blog, portfolio, shop, BB Press, and uh, Buddy Press, uh, they are all shown here. So we want all of them gone. I don't want any of those things. In fact, um, I don't think I want that menu at all. So rather than just deleting everything manually, let's just get rid of that menu because it's not being used. We do need main navigation, but I want to change everything that's in there. So I'm going to delete, well, the home, that is the, a bad link anyway. I'm just going to change that to um, the site itself. So let's just use, uh, I'm going to copy in the URL. So we will use that there. And then of course that does make it tedious to re delete everything else. These are all sample home pages that uh, university theme had installed as part of the demo content, but we don't need any of those. So we will go ahead and delete them all, unfortunately one by one, but they're all done now. We're not using events. Let's get rid of that. This is definitely a very tedious process because they have so many demo elements. Now we're not going to use this courses link either. We are going to create our own My Courses page. All right, and we're not going to give anyone access to it if they are signed out. So we're not going to use that. We're not going to use any of these pages. You can see there are actually a lot of pages. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and delete that and uh, we'll resume the video when I'm done. Okay, so now I've deleted everything except the home page and the contact us page. I'm going to leave those two in. And what I am going to do is um, first I'm going to add hours. So an easy way to log in and log out. And then I'm going to add some of the pages. So we just added those. I don't want people getting to the store directly. Um, so I'm going to leave those out. But what I do need is the my account page. So I'm going to have to search for that. And that's as much as I need for now. So I'm going to reorder this. Uh, my courses comes first. I don't want that nested. Next, the transcript. Next, the account. And what I do want to change though, this should only be visible to signed in users. And right now I don't have that option. So I'm going to go and modify the plugins or rather the modules for the Uncanny Toolkit. Uh, where is it? Menu item visibility was turned off. Let's turn that back on. And that just means I can control what people see based on their signed in state. So let's go back to uh, menus then. And this is the one I was editing. So my courses, that only applies to logged in users. Same for transcript, same for account and the rest is going to be open for users that aren't signed in as well. So let's take a look. What does this look like now? 
this is vastly simplified. All right, so what we haven't done yet is any kind of branding. Social elements are still up here. They can be customized. Uh, that should not have that subtitle there, so I'll remove that. But the rest, let's take a look at what it looks like now. My courses, we've already looked at that. Pretty clean. Transcript page. This is the transcript for the user. If I'd been planning ahead, uh, right now you can see this user's at uh, 50%. Um, I probably want to override some of this with CSS. Uh, this is university that's imposing these, uh, these styles. Uh, probably want this full width. It doesn't really make sense to have the certificate there. Uh, my account page, let's take a look at that. So this is uh, you know, where somebody could go in if they wanted to change their password. They could do that from here. So profile management is there, and this is all provided by BuddyPress. This is um, out of the box with university, part of the demo. There is a contact page that's very basic, so I'm going to leave that in there. Actually, I don't really like how that looks, so I'm going to uh, go back over here, and uh, I've just modified it so that instead of the login, log out, I'm using login for logged in users and log out. Sorry, I've got it backwards. Log in for logged out users and log out for logged in users. That should look a little better. And if I go back over here, then that's better. So it's just showing log out. You can see how that is conditional. It's not showing the log in because I am signed in right now. All right, next I'm going to get WooCommerce working properly. So what we need to do for that is um, go into the site and uh, I'm going to create a new product. What is missing though, and I know I didn't upload it earlier, was the WooCommerce and LearnDash integration plugin. So this is another one I do need to upload. So I'll go back to the upload and uh, go to this folder and re-upload that. So let's install that. And what that does, it creates a bridge between WooCommerce and LearnDash so that when you set up a WooCommerce product, you can have it assigned to one or more courses, uh, which will then unlock access. So that table we saw before, or the field we saw before with the, um, the user IDs, where they would go um, on the course edit page, uh, it would populate them there. So that is now set up and we can create a product. So let's take a look at how that works. So I'm going to call this one Intro to Microeconomics. There we go. Um, and then we would have some information about the course. This is where information about the course would go. Okay, so that's been created. Uh, again, you can see there's a lot that we just don't need. So let's clean that up again. Um, we're not going to do too much with it, so I'm going to remove that. I'm not using categories. Uh, there won't be a gallery. So anyway, that cleans things up a bit. So that is where text would go. And uh, here I'm going to say, so if we had a short description, this is where more information, or actually, OK, so we've got some information in there. Um, and then what we need to do here is change this to a course. Now you can see we've got that option, and the regular price is $99, which we'd already set up. Um, we could add an image here, so let's go to our library, because we've already set some up. This is the image I want to use for that, so that is the product image, and we will publish that. All right, so that is set up now. So that means the product exists. And what's important here, let me go to the list of products. What's important here, you can see that there are already some, some demo products set up. But uh, what I want to do is grab the ID. The ID is 2874, if you can see that there. So I'm going to copy that. 2874 is what I need. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add that to a couple of places. So first, where I'm going to add it is uh, on the course itself. So if you remember, when I first set up the course, there was a link for a button when it's a closed course. So down here in this section, we've got the button URL. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that the URL of the site. 
Then I'm going to do slash cart. And I know this one kind of you need to go from memory. Uh, it's add to cart. And you can just copy this example equals and then the ID. And there's a space there I don't want. So let's clean that up. So that's what I want to do. I don't necessarily want people to get to the product page. So I'm going to go and add that. And then the next thing I need to do is add it to the home page. So first, first though, let's, let's take a look at what that did. And I'm going to open as an incognito window because it behaves differently for admins. So let's do that. Open as uh, an incognito window. Because now I'm not signed in and I'm not enrolled, you can see it is overlapping here. Uh, this is actually a university issue. So uh, it's easy to put a bit of space in there or add a bit of uh, spacing in there with, with some CSS. But uh, yeah, that's interesting. Anyway, so now I click take this course. All right, so here I am directly in the cart now and I could go ahead and proceed to checkout. So this is all set up. Um, you can see it is prompting to create um, the account. So it's got um, the account password here. Normally WooCommerce generates this based on the email address, but uh, you can turn that on or off. Um, so you would go through and then there the payment uh, confirmation would be here. You can see that I haven't set up Stripe at this point or PayPal, so that's why it's saying that. But at a minimum, you can see how this uh, this would work. All right, so that's essentially that then. While I'm signed out in this incognito window, you can also see too that the menu is very different now. So I've got the login option, the contact page, the home page, it doesn't have my courses, the transcript, or uh, the my account page. So if I click on login, I didn't actually demo that earlier. You can see this is a very, very simple form, very simple form. Um, so you could certainly add more to it. So the other place that I wanted to modify the link, just so we had a direct link, was of course in the slider here. So on the home page here, we've got this. This of course doesn't make any sense um, for by this theme. It would be by this course. So what what I would do then is uh, let's go let's go back over here. We would go into the slider for that. So slider revolution. And uh, we want to edit that. Actually, sorry, that's the one we want. So let's go into the slide page that has that. So we're on slide one right now. All right, so we've selected that. And what we want to do now is change that link, of course, to um, same as what we used earlier. So this would be screencast.uncannycloud.com slash, and then I'm going to use the cart um, again, so I'm going to add it directly to the cart. And I've totally forgotten what the ID was. Anyway, it's something like that. It's not really important as long as we've got the example of how you would change that. So that's been changed. Save that. And now the button on the home page would work for going directly to buying this course. And then, of course, if someone did get to the course page itself, we have the take this course button that would still direct them to the, uh, the cart page so that they could buy it. So that takes care of that piece. And then the only thing that's remaining is branding. We haven't done anything with branding. I'm not going to get into any more detail about things like changing the footer or anything like that, but let's at least change the logo. So to do that, we would go in to um, the dashboard again. There are a lot of options available under theme options. And this is where you can set a logo. All right, so in the theme options, I'm just going to scroll down here. And I'm going to make a change to the logo image. And for that one, I'm just going to drag in a new file here. Upload that. And uh, let's see how that looks. So we'll submit that. It looks bad there, but of course the um, actual site has a dark background. So we'll get that updated. And it doesn't look great, but uh, if I had more time, I would go through and change the color palette. You can see this, this button should not work properly. And of course, this needs to be changed, but 
the basic idea is there now. We've got all the, uh, the Learn Dash pieces we need. We've got the uh, the access to the courses, a way to purchase the courses. That when people buy them, they're added to their courses list. Uh, we've got the transcript, account management, contact page. Um, really, as much as somebody would need to uh, interact with the basic Learn Dash site. So we hope this video was helpful in uh, getting things off the ground with your site. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video.